Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadha, Sri Vas Adigaura Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai. Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopina, Shama Kunda Radha Kund Giri Govada Ki Jai. Jai. Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai. Jai. Mayapur Navadvip Dham Ki Jai. Jai. Ganga Mai Yamuna Mai Ki Jai. Jai. Bhakti Devi Tulsi Maharani Ki Jai. Jai. Samaveda Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai. Jai. Go, Raprani. Hari Hari Go. Glories to the assembled devotees. Hare Krishna. All glories to the assembled devotees. Hare Krishna. All glories to the assembled devotees. Hare Krishna. Glories, all glories to the lotus feet of Sri Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 Krishna, good morning to you all. Greetings from Sri Dham Mayapur. I hope you had a wonderful Gaura Purnima festival from wherever you are. You uh, in Mayapur, you must have had very good one. It was a nice festival. Here in the land of Gaura Hari. Uh, so, this morning we continue our study of Srimad Bhagavatam. We are in the second canto, the seventh chapter. Today's verse is number 46. Sevai Vedantya Titaranti Chadeva Mayam Sri Shudrahuna Shabara Api Papa Jiva Yad 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 Bhuta Krama Parayana Shila Shish Shas Ir Yagjana Api Kim U Shruta Dharana Ye Te Vai Vedantya Titaranti Chadeva Mayam Sri Shudrahuna Sabara Api Papa Jiva Yad Yad Bhuta Krama Parayana Shila Shikshas Sir Yag Jana Apikan U Dharana Meye Devai Vedantya Taranti Chadeva Mayam Rishudrahuna Sabara Apikapa Jiva Yad Yad Bhuta Krama Parayana Shila Shikshas Hiryagjana Apikim U Shutadharana Ye. Please chant. Devai Vidanti Atitaranti Chadeva Maya Stri Shudrahuna Sabara Apipapa Jiva Yad Yad Putakrama Parayana Shila Shikshas Tiryak jana apikum o shutadharana ye. Te vai vidyanti ati. Te vai Deva mayam. Sri sudrahuna subara. Api papa jiva. Yadjad putakar kram. Yajat put a crama parayan ashila shikshas. Tir yak jan, apikim. usruta. Dara naye, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Devai bidhanti atira atira taranti cha deva mayam. Stri Shudrahuna Sabarapi Papa Jiva 
यदि अद्भुत क्रम परायना शीला शिक्षा जना अपी किम श्रुतधार नये हरे कृष्ण ते बै बेदंती अति तरंती च देव माया श्री शूद्र हुना शोभरा अति पाप जीव यादि अद्भुत क्रम परायण शील शिक्षा श्री तीरा जना अपि किम श्रुत धारणाये तरंती च देव मयां श्री शूद्रहून शबर अभी पाप जीवा यद्भुत क्रम परायनशील शिक्षा तीरजना किं उश्रुत धारण ये Hey, such persons, vai, undoubtedly, vidanti, do know, atitaranti, surpass, cha, also, deva mayam, the covering energy of the Lord, three, such as women, shudra, the laborer class of men, una. the mountaineers shabara the siberians or those lower than the shudras uh, although papa jiva sinful living beings yadi provided adbhuta krama one whose acts are so wonderful parayana those who are devotees shila behavior shiksha shiksha trained by tiryak janaha even those who are not human beings api also kim what u to speak of truta dharan Shutadharana, those who have taken to the idea of the Lord by hearing about Him, yea, those. Translation and purport by by Charanara the Nidh Bhakti Vinod Swami Prabhupada. Surrendered souls, even from groups leading sinful lives, such as women, the laborer class, the mountaineers, and the Siberians, or even the birds and beasts. can also know about the science of godhead and become liberated from the clutches of the illusory energy by surrendering unto the pure devotees of the lord and by following in their footsteps in devotional service purport sometimes there are inquiries as how one can under uh, sorry how one can surrender unto the supreme lord in the bhagavad gita Chapter eighteen, verse sixty-six. The Lord asked Arjuna to surrender unto Him, and therefore persons unwilling to do so question where God is and to whom they should surrender. The answer to such questions or inquiries is given herein very properly. The personality of Godhead may not be present before one's eyes, but if one is sincere in wanting such guidance. The Lord will send a bona fide person who can guide one properly back home, back to Godhead. There is no need of material qualifications for making process. Sorry for make the stuck out of. There is no need of material qualifications for making progress on the path of spiritual realization. In the material world, when one accepts some particular type of service. He is required to possess some particular type of qualification. Also, without this, one is un such service. But in the devotional service of the Lord, 
the only qualification required is surrender. Surrendering oneself is in one's own hand. If one likes, he can surrender immediately without delay. And that begins his spiritual life. The bona fide representative of God is as good as God himself. Or, in other words, the loving representative of the Lord is more kind and more easy to approach. A sinful soul cannot approach the Lord directly, but such a sinful man can very easily approach a pure devotee of the Lord. And if one agrees to put himself under the guidance of such a devotee of the Lord, he can also understand the science of God and can also become like the transcendental pure devotee of the Lord and thus get his liberation back to Godhead, back home for eternal happiness. So realization of the science of Godhead and relief from the unnecessary useless struggle for existence are not at all difficult for the willing candidate. But they're very difficult for persons who are not surrendered souls, but only simple, profitless speculators. Translation again. Surrendered souls, even from groups leading sinful lives, such as women, the laborer class, the mountaineers, and the Siberians, or even the birds and beasts, can also know about the science of Godhead and become liberated from the clutches of the illusory energy by surrendering unto the pure devotees of the Lord and by following in their footsteps in devotional service. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Buddhavay Sri Mathe Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nathanamane Namaste Saraswate Devi Gauravana Kachani Nirvishesha Shum Nivari Kashtrati Vishitani Om Ajnana Timiram Dasya Gnam Janashalakaya Chakshor Nulitam Nena Tasma Shri Gurve Namaha Vanshakalpat Kripa Sindhubya Eva Cha Patitanam Pavanebio Vaishnavebio Namo Namaha Hare Krishna So today's verse it's, uh, it's full of good news It says that even living entities who are leading sinful lives can also know about the science of Godhead and become liberated from the clutches of the illusory energy. And then Srila Prabhupada in his purport points out that there is no need of material qualifications for making progress on the path of spiritual realization. Right? Unlike the material world where uh, you have to somehow qualify yourself in order to fulfill some sort. Right? And one might argue with this actually. One might say, no, there are plenty of instances in the material world where someone is holding a post that they are completely unqualified for, right? I'm sure everyone on here has plenty of examples of people who are occupying a post they are completely unqualified for, right? But this is Kali Yuga. So standards of qualification, right? Um, they are kar karmically qualified, actually. They're not qualified to um, necessarily hold that post successfully and and be effective at it, but they are qualified to hold that post and allow Kali Yuga to continue on its downward spiral, right? So traditionally, qualifications would mean like, you know, a doctor, for example. If you want to become a medical doctor, you have to learn about anatomy and you have to show that you can practically apply that knowledge before they'll actually put you, you know, in, and have you perform surgery on a live patient, right? But even in the medical field, uh, if you... Um, are born in the right family, you have the right amount of money, your relatives know the right uh, you know, board members of the hospitals, etc. Even if you fail your practical examinations, you can still be put as a chair of the hospital. So you actually get even a higher position, even though you're not qualified to do these things. And they just figure, all right, well, if we surround this fool, but, you know, he's his family, but if we surround this fool with qualified people, then he'll at least look good. He'll look like, oh, he's, you know, he's he's a great head of, you know, the department of surgery or whatever the case may be. But it's because there's a whole lot of surgeons who are actually qualified. So we may argue, no, there are people that have 
uh, positions that are not qualified. So this purport is actually wrong. But no, it's not wrong because uh, they have other qualifications. They were born in that particular family. They're able to, uh, you know, uh, they're, they're surrounded with unscrupulous people who at all costs will put them in whatever position they they feel uh, is, is they're suitable for. So when we say qualification, this is what it means, karma, right? So what previous uh, activities and desires that they've had that, that can accumulate the qualification to do a material thing? do it well it just means that they're going to be put in charge of that due to their previous karma so as Srila Prabhupada points out unlike how that works in the material world uh, for, for spiritual matters we don't have to have any pre-qualification we don't have to have any material qualification in order to transcend the material world we just have to surrender Sri Prabhupada pointed that out and that's in our own hands Right? It's not that someone can come up to us and say, surrender, and then we're surrendered. No, it's, it's, this is a decision that we get to make. Krishna gave us this free will. Right. So since today, it's saying that even living entities who are leading sinful lives can also know about the science of Godhead and become liberated from the clutches of illusory energy and that there's no material disqualifications. This is all very good news. Right. Uh, and this is the news that I want to focus on today. This is actually what the 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 what we want to emphasize and really talk about today. But before we talk about that, I, I find it necessary to address. There's this phenomenon that sometimes occurs when we get good news, but sometimes somehow for whatever reason, it leaves a bad taste in our mouth. For whatever reason, it could be because of conditioning, it could be because we're remembering whatever, whatever the case may be. Sometimes when we get good news, uh, it just leaves a bad taste in our mouth. So I want to look at a couple more lists from the Shastra. Today we saw the list of, quote, sinful people. So I want to look at two other lists that are also in the Shastra that, that give similar lists. And then, I, and then I want to address this and just talk about it so we can get that out of the way so we can really get to the thrust of what this class is. So the first one will be Bhagavad Gita 9.32. So this over here. So 9.32. Uh, oh, on the wrong window. Here we are. Uh, o son of Pritza, those who take shelter in me, though they may be of lower birth, and then there's a list, women, Vaishyas, and Shudras can attain the supreme destination. So this is another list. It's another list that's saying that regardless of one's material qualification supreme destination but this one so that the the, the the list from today's verse is talking about sinful people this verse is talking about people of lower birth right but it lists women by sutra so women and sutras are in both lists another list um this comes from Srimad bhagavatam first canto uh, fourth chapter text 25 uh there's another list uh, that Srila Vyasadeva gives. He's talking to his, his spiritual master, Narada Muni. He's feeling very despondent um, about his life's work, compi compiling the Vedic literatures. And he's explaining, this is what I've done. So tell me, please, why do I still feel dissatisfied? So when Srila Vyasadeva uh, gives this list, he's talking about um, also, again, women, again, Shudras, and we have Dvija Bandhus, the, the friend of the Dvijas. So Dvija Bandhu, before we go further, it's interesting, Dvija Bandhu. So Dvija means the twice-born, so the Brahmanas, the Kshatriyas, and the Vaishyas. Dvija Bandhu, it means the friend of the Dvijas, which is a very polite way of saying you are not qualified to be a Dvija. You, you may be blood-related, you may be friendly, you may even hold the position you may be a teacher, so that's that's the position of a Dvija. But if you don't have the qualification, you are called a Dvija Bandhu, right? So if you don't have the qualification, you are not actually considered a Dvija. So this list is saying, Srila Vyasadeva is mentioning that for these specific types of people, the women, the Shudras, and the Dvija Bandhus, those who have some sort of relationship with the Dvijas but don't actually have the qualifications, for these types of people, he compiled the Mahabharata. Uh, the reason he did that is because he considered they wouldn't be attracted to the direct intellectual presentations of the philosophy. So therefore, for these kinds of people, 
He included dramatic stories and intriguing details that keep the attention of, you know, people who aren't just, you know, intellectually focused on philosophy. Right. So in all of these lists, as I pointed out, women in Shudra are there. There are others depending on which list. And these lists, in today's verse, it's 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 talking about them being sinful. Uh, in, in, in the Bhagavad Gita verse, it's talking about them being of lower birth. And in the other Srimad Bhagavatam verse of, of Srila Vyasadeva, uh, he's talking about people to focus their attention without some aspect of entertainment. So these lists can leave a bad taste in the mouth for some readers, right? Some readers will read through this and they'll actually get offended by it. And even worse than that, uh, it can give neophyte practitioners an opportunity to apply the philosophy in various ways while actually referring to Shastra, right? And as Sriya Sapanishad points out, uh, ignorance is dangerous, but ignorance disguised as knowledge is even more dangerous, the culture of so-called knowledge. So if one is engaging in ignorance, uh, say, for example, uh, 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 unfairly uh, judging someone based on their conditioning, uh, and they're using Shastra to do it, then that is even worse than just ignorance, right? Because it's, it's disguised as knowledge. So for these reasons, it's in some people's mouths, right? It, it can leave us with a, a strange impression, right? Now, there are countless ways that these lists can and are misused throughout the society. To address all of these individually would require a very, very long seminar. But for today's relatively short class, what I want to do is I want to get to the heart of the misunderstanding. Instead of talking about all the different ways it can be misapplied and how they're wrong, I want to get to the heart of the misunderstanding so that we can clarify uh, as much as possible, what the actual um, proper understanding is and how we can move forward from that instead of, you know, arguing back and forth. This means this, this means that. So this is what I hope to accomplish. This class. Uh, so first, we should take note that all of us who are here in this material world are inclined to sinful living. Like the verse is saying, there was, it says those who are, are uh, uh, inclined to sinful living, and it gave a list. We are all of us who are here in this material world are here for that very reason. We turned our backs on the Supreme Lord to try our, our hands at being the central controller and or enjoyer, independent from Krishna. Right. So unless we are an avatar, either a Shakti Vesha or otherwise, and are very specifically sent here to deliver the fallen conditioned souls of this material world and are purely Krishna conscious without a tinge of sinful desire, unless we fit that description. We are all on the same sinking ship. We are sinful. We are living sinful lives. So that's the first thing. So if someone is saying, here, you're on this list, therefore you are sinful, and they're also in the material world, guess what? They're also living sinful lives, right? And they're missing the point of the verse, because the verse is, even if you are living a sinful life, you can achieve the highest perfection, which is to transcend material suffering. So that's the first thing. So... <clears throat> The next thing we need to point out is conditioning is very unique, very specific. Okay. We get these specific bodies for a very good reason. It's not, it's not random. It's not by chance. Our past desires and material activities provide us with this very unique body with distinctive layers of the three modes of material nature that are covering our true self. That's our constitutional self. So under the covering of all these very specific layers, this, this matrix of layers, our constitutional self is hidden and we act uh, as uh, according to our conditioned nature. So there are very many aspects at play that determine uh, the bodies that we get. So sometimes, even though we have a gross body, the subtle body may sometimes seem not to match that gross body, right? So an example is, and I think we've all seen uh, occurrences of this, is sometimes 
in a very, very rough family, like very rough family, someone is born that's just very gentle and cultured. And you see when, when friends of the family, uh, yeah, friends of the family come over and they see this kid or even the, the family themselves, they, they say things like you must be adopted because every one of us is like this, but you, you are very unique. You see this, that happens. So sometimes you would say, well, how is that? How does that work with with karma? If they're born into this particular type of family, how do they have this other seemingly contradictory qualification? The whole family is rough and rugged and they're very gentle and cultured. How does that work? Well, that works because, like I said, there's a lot of factors at play. They they uh, needed to have the experience of being born in a family of ruffians, but they also had the qualification of being gentle, learned and cultured. Right. And so there, so many things are going on and we don't know exactly what those things were because they happened in previous lives. But we can be sure that whatever specific body we have, even though it may seem strange or it may seem not to fit in any sort of box, uh, it's very specific to our uh, past activities and desires. Um, so. The material conditionings that we have, as pointed out in today's purport, it, they will limit what kind of material activities we can perform, right? Because those are the laws of nature. They're quite strict and unbendable. Um, as I pointed out, sometimes it may seem that the laws of nature aren't that strict and they're kind of bendable because you see people that don't seem to be qualified for a position that are holding it. But because of their specific karma, uh, because of age of Kali, nepotism is a very uh, rampant thing. <clears throat> there, there absolutely are qualifications for these people to be in those positions, not to do them in a good way or a proper way, actually hold those positions, absolutely. Uh, there is a very strict material code and no one can bend or break it uh, materially. In, in, in any material way no way there's no material effort that we can put forth that will the material nature so but sometimes we see within a lifetime um, if we have the previous karma for it we can work hard and it can seem that we have attained a material goal that we should not have been able to get right due to how we you know how we came into this world it may seem that way and we hear all these stories about these these rags to riches stories where someone, you know, took this really horrible aspect of their life and really just turned it around. And it, it all happened just because of hard work and anybody could do it. Right. We hear these stories. We, we were inspired by them and we think, OK, this is this is what's going to happen to us. But the fact of the matter is, again, in their previous lives, they earned the karma to start out their life. A whole lot of trouble. And um, to 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 be able to put forth some work and then and then and then get to a, a higher position. This is all predetermined. It's not something that 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 we can just do. But the good news is, because you know we're we're all inspired when we hear these stories. When someone just overcomes these unsurmountable odds and 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 is standing in the face of overwhelming adversity, these things inspire us. We think, okay, yeah. So it's okay to be inspired by these things because we can stand in the face of adversity, which is material nature, the laws of material nature, and we can overcome the overwhelming odds, as today's uh, verse and purport pointed out, by <clears throat> finding uh, a pure devotee of the Lord, learn from them and following in their footsteps, right? This is how we can overcome the biggest obstacle, which is material nature. But if we think that by material actions, we're going to get a better material result that we haven't already previously earned in our previous karma, then we're simply fooling ourselves and trying to make this world a better place, a different place, more tolerant place, however you want to put it, through material activities, uh, it's not going to end well for us because all it will do is bind us to this material world. So regardless of our conditioned nature, whether it's good, bad, higher, lower, uh, advantageous, handicap, whatever, it doesn't matter, whatever our conditioned nature is, if we identify with that nature, we remain in the material world. 
Simple as that. If we identify with our, uh, our, our conditioned material nature, that means we are stuck here in this material world. If we identify with any nature that is not our pure original constitutional nature, we will remain perpetually in this world of suffering, right? So what does that mean? Who are we actually? What is our relationship, uh, be the relationship between us and the Supreme Lord? We are infinitesimally small and we are servants of the Supreme Whole. We are part and parcel of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. If we're identifying with anything other than that, whether it's the current body we're in or if we're identifying with something else that's not even this body, it's a, a different type of body or a different type of entity. If we're identifying with anything or identifying as anything other than the eternal servant of Krishna, infinitesimal part, uh, we will remain in this material world until we uh, start identifying as spirit, soul, and acting accordingly. Right. So understanding what our true identity is, that's called Sambandha and what the relationship is between us and the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sambandha. Uh, to act accordingly, that's Abhideya. So I act according to this knowledge that I am a, a, an eternal servant of Krishna. That's not. And then Prayojana, the goal is to actually associate with Krishna eternally. In, 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 in full knowledge and complete bliss, right? So if we want to attain that goal, that prayojana, we have to follow the sambandha, which means we have to understand who we are and act accordingly. So in order to do that, we have to understand conditioned nature and our constitutional nature, right? Now, our material conditioning determines what our potential is material potential right it's based on like i said previous desires and accumulation of pious or impious credits so the bodies that we get or or even the bodies that we don't get but we identify as will determine what our potential is in this material world the process of spirituality gives us the opportunity to engage that potential not in material uh, uh, consciousness, but in Krishna's service, so that instead of causing further bondage, it becomes an instrument of our liberation and uncovers our constitutional position, our actual position. Right? Some of our conditioned nature uh, shows us, based on what our previous desires and activities were, what our current material is and uh, the process of spirituality allows us to in a particular potential that we have a very specific unique one based on you know uh, the different desires and activities that we've been engaged in to engage that in krishna's service instead of being engaged thinking ourselves as the center understanding that krishna is the center and and performing all of those activities in a proper way right Processes of spirituality allows us to use our material potential, which normally holds us back, and it becomes an object of our liberation from this material bondage. So I often quote this verse. It's also from the first canto. This is the fifth chapter, text 34, and it explains this exact concept that I just said. Uh, it says, thus, when a man's activities are dedicated to the service of the Lord, those very activities which caused his perpetual bondage become the destroyer of the tree of work. So the very activities that are, are causing our bondage can actually destroy this tree of work. So the, the material potential that we have that's binding us to this world can be used, if directed in the proper direction, uh, to actually free ourselves from the bondage. So our material conditioning, it's unfortunate, but it's something that we can use to get us out, right, uh, of this material world. So this, by the way, is why it's better to engage our own duty incorrectly or improperly than to engage in another du another's duty perfectly, because we become purified by engaging our own nature, right, our own conditioning. Uh, the process is 
we are here in this material world covered by these various modes of material nature. Uh, and because of those modes of material nature, we have a very specific type of potential within this material world. Is that exact potential in Krishna's service instead of in our own service, that conditioning dissolves and there we are left with our constitutional position, Satchitananda. But if we engage in someone else's potential, we're not purifying our modes. We're, we're doing something else. Even though we may be materially successful in a different activity, since we're not actually engaging our own nature, it's not going to purify us, right? So that's why it's very important for us to understand, okay, what is my condition nature and how can I engage that in Christian service? And that comes as the verse and purport said today, uh, by approaching a bona fide representative of Krishna, serving them and following in their footsteps. So one may ask, okay, well, what does this look like? Okay, I, it sounds good in theory. I understand that there are things that are in my conditioned nature that if I do it in the proper way, that can actually liberate me from this bondage. But what does that actually an example? Actually, before I give this example, I want to point out, because all these lists that we were talking about all have the term. They also have shudra. Like I said, most of us are actually on these lists, whether we know it or not, whether we want to acknowledge it or not. But somehow it seems to at least some that women are actually getting the short end of the stick on this. They're always being picked on, and, you know, and, and, you know, and in many cases, that's actually true. Some people take these things out of context and they do pick on these poor women and say that they're, you know, less qualified or, you know, or whatever, you know, saying different things. So let's first we want to we want to we want to say that the Sanskrit word for women in all of these verses, is three. And it refers to one who expands the field, right? So a woman with material consciousness will tend to expand the material field, right? That's just a tendency. That's a general nature. I mentioned before, there are certainly exceptions due to the vast backlog of desires and karmas which determines our body. So we can be born in the, the gross body of a woman but we may have the subtle body of something entirely different because of our you know previous activities so it's not that every single woman will tend to expand the field of activities it's just a general thing like we can say for example just in the in, in the realm of logic um all squares are rectangles because a rectangle is defined by having four 90 degree angles and the opposite sides have to be the same Right. So every square is classified as a rectangle. So we can say that generally, like if we look around, at least this room, there are many occurrences of rectangles. You have the doors, the, the panels, there are bricks. You can't see the bricks because there's a, there's a thing there, but the windows, all rectangles. Right. So we can say that generally these rectangles have a different you know, they're opposite sides that match, but the other sides are different, right? We can say that's generally how rectangles are. But if we say that all rectangles are like that, then we're wrong because squares, which are also classified as rectangles, they have the same all four sides. I'm a sorry if this is a little, um, math is my thing. It's not everybody's thing. But in other words, we can stations sometimes, but they can't go the other way. We can say most rectangles have a different um you know they, they always have the same opposite sides but they can have different sets of opposite sides most that's in general but just because we see a rectangle we can't say that no they have you know they have different opposite sides we you know because they can be squares where all of the all, all four of the sides are exactly the same sorry nah, it's me so just because we can say that if you're in the body of a woman and you are materially conditioned, you will tend to expand the field of material activity. It doesn't mean that just because you're in a woman's body that that's going to be your tendency. It's just going to be, you know, it, it'll be fairly likely. So, general tendency. The, let's 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 give an example of what this might look like. So, for example, let's say there's a single fellow. He's new to Krishna consciousness. 
He's attracted to this concept of simple living and high thinking. And of course, he lives in a bare bones apartment. There's hardly a stick of furniture in it. He's got one bowl, one spoon, one. His refrigerator is full of condiments and soda. And his cupboards are full of junk food. Right? Simple. It's it's the, your stereotypical bachelor pad. It's the kind of place where generally if someone walks into, they look around and they say, this place could really use a woman's touch. And they say that because it's true, generally. Not always, but generally. Women will tend to expand the uh, the field to make it more comfortable, right? To make it more practical, to make it more enjoyable, to make it, you know, whatever the, whatever word you want to use, right? So let's for example, this fellow, he's this, you know, this kind of fellow. And he knows, oh, and he's obviously, so he's, a, he's an aspiring devotee. So obviously he also has, you know, he picked a nice shelf that he cleaned off very nicely and he cut out his favorite photograph of Srila Prabhupada and he put it up there and you know he wanted to offer Srila Prabhupada water every day so he found this thimble very practical the little little Prabhupada little cup and cleaned it out just in case any you know any dirty things entered the thimble at any point in time cleaned it out very nicely very consciously you know and he daily fills that with fresh water and there it is Srila Prabhupada one shelf one picture one cup boss right and that's the same shelf that he offers all of his junk food on you know let's say let's say his favorite thing is potato chips and soda right so he does all of his offerings of potato chips and soda and he figures okay this is this is this is a good this is a good life right so <clears throat> he this person may consider because he's a neophyte he may consider that since women also called stri tend to expand the material field he should stay away from them at all costs because <laughs> if he gets too close to them he may become entangled because the material field expands then that's more things to be distracted by right so he may think this but nonetheless although he has this so-called intelligence to, to to understand this he still has me right we've seen this story happen millions of times and nonetheless eventually right so there he is he has a wife and unless he is able to start understanding the actual process of Krishna consciousness and how to apply it, he is going to blame his wife for him not be, being able to become a devotee because, oh, she's buying all this unnecessary stuff and I have to go to work and, you know, it's, you know, my life was so much better, you know, before, you know, this is the kind of thing that a neophyte devotee with a very limited understanding of these things is, and it's actually, unfortunately, it's a very common thing, right? Now, let's say, on the other hand, this single fellow who's also, same thing, new to Krishna consciousness, um, attracted to the simple living high thinking, has that same exact apartment with that same very simple altar. Let's say that he understands that he has a desire to enjoy materially and that it's his own shortcoming. It's not anyone else's. He has no one else to blame. It's I understand that I have these these shortcomings. And he wants to figure out to engage uh, his nature in Krishna's service. So what he does, he carefully selects a wife who is also very serious about Krishna consciousness, who have a compatible nature, and who is also interested in engaging her particular nature in Krishna service. So both of them can together purify their consciousness and go back home, back to Godhead, right? So let's say he has enough intelligence to, you know, to do that, right? So then... She has this tendency, she's three, she has this tendency to expand the field, but she's Krishna conscious, right? So she understands that although she has this tendency to expand the field, she should only expand those areas which will actually improve their Krishna consciousness. So it might look like this. She might say, dear husband, I very much like your altar. That is also my favorite photo of Srila Prabhupada. It's amazing. And it's so creative that you use this thimble to offer him water that's it's and it's so cute it looks really nice right i also noticed that you yourself have you know have a water container right you know obviously people people drink water through the prop on these oh you drink water uh, um where'd you get that from oh yeah a friend gave it to me it's it's great you know it's it, mine has this lid on it it's very practical because if i you know if i'm walking around you know i, I could turn it and it won't spill and then she might say something like yeah, but when you're sitting down, you know, why don't you just leave the lid off, you know, because you're drinking and you put it down and you drink, put it down. 
And the fellow might say, oh, well, you know, just in case there's dust in the air or like bugs crawling around, it's better, you know, it makes more sense. It, it's not too much effort and it makes more sense to just put the lid on. And then she might say, oh, you know what? Maybe we should for Srila Prabhupada's cup. And he might say, why didn't I think of that? So we see that the field is expanding, but it's expanding not only the quality of the offering, but it's also expanding the uh, consciousness of the fellow. He's, he's thinking, oh, yeah, no, that makes sense. Srila Prabhupada is a person I'm trying to serve. And if I'm serving him to a lower standard than I'm serving myself, then that's not great, right? And so it keeps going this way, right? It, it's, it, it doesn't stop there. So the altar expands, right? You have the lid on the water cup. You, maybe you get a frame for the photo instead of having it blue tacked to the wall and it's all curvy because, you know, it's humid inside. Maybe you get a nice sitting place, a little little carpet or a little mat, right? Because, you know, you're not sitting on a shelf. You're sitting on a you know mat. Flowers, maybe your offering of potato chips and soda is going to improve gradually, right? Okay, so... One might say, "No, no, no. We should ex we should offer whatever we think is the best to Krishna because that's how you that's how you express your love." Okay, sure, no problem. Let's let's go with that train of thought because it's it's good, it's valid. If I think potato chips and soda is the ultimate meal, right? That's what I should offer to Krishna. Eventually, I should start thinking, "Can I offer better? Offer better potato chips and soda to Krishna? Like, are these the best?" potato chips and soda no maybe they're not maybe i can get a different kind of potato chips that are actually better quality and offer those to krishna maybe i can actually make my own you know i can i can learn how to properly cut them or peel them in such a way that they're just the right thickness and i can learn what to soak them in in order to take the starch away so that when i fry them they're actually crispy instead of floppy i could learn all these things because i want to please krishna in a, in a better way right and then maybe eventually these chips are good, but you know maybe we should get maybe we should up the ante a little bit. Maybe we should offer Krishna, you know, something that's even better. So let's still you know fry these potatoes or whatever, but let's you know let's put a nice sauce on it and put maybe some other vegetables in that are also appreciated, right? And you know, etc. On and on and on. And then maybe eventually we also find out what is it, what is it actually that Krishna wants? What are his favorite foods? We find out that. He loves milk sweets, for example, right? So we can start offering those to Krishna. You know, maybe maybe we're lactose intolerant personally, right? But if we know that Krishna likes milk sweets, of course we're going to make it for him. We might not take them. We'll give them to somebody else who, you know, after Krishna's finished, we'll give it to someone else who appreciates milk sweets. Um, but we start doing things in a conscious, thoughtful way that we're actually serving Krishna. So this is this is what it looks like, taking our conditioning in this case, it's taking two people's different conditionings, working together to expand one's understanding of the process of Krishna consciousness and to apply it properly. They're both using their conditionings and they're both engaging that conditioning in Krishna's service. So, like I said, there's a lot to talk about on this subject and it's a very important subject to understand. Uh, as I mentioned, it could be a, a seminar uh, and it, maybe it needs to be one. Because it's such a it's such a, a common misunderstanding amongst devotees what this means, and we we have debates about it. But you know maybe we actually should all come together and just figure it out together and go through all these things. But what I hope uh, has been made clear in today's very short session is that our conditioned natures, no matter what they are, good, bad, whatever, uh, they do not hold us back from successfully engaging in devotional service and attaining the highest goal of returning back home, back to Godhead, and engaging in personal pastimes with Krishna. But as long as we identify with our conditioning or try to make the world a better place based on misidentification of any material conditioning, we will be perpetually bound to this world of suffering. Our own solution for ourselves and for others because some people say, like, I don't, I'm not worried about myself. I just want to help others in this world. They're very selfless in, in one sense. And so they want to do this. But truly, our only solution for ourselves and others is to understand our true identification. That's as the infinitesimal 
part and parcel of the Supreme Holy Shri Hari. That's Sambandha, to understand who we are. To act according to that relationship uh, by engaging properly in devotional service. That's called Abhideya, the process. So that we can uncover our constitutional nature of eternity, bliss, and knowledge and enjoy our pastimes with Lord Krishna personally, the Prayojan. Um, so whatever problem we see in this material world can only be solved by this, by understanding who we truly are, identifying with our true selves instead of a different version of what we think we are due to the material conditioning, act according to that proper identification of who we are. And that is how we can attain the goal. And that's what our process is. We find someone, it doesn't matter what our material conditioning is, we find someone who understands the process of Krishna consciousness. We ask them to please show us what the process of Krishna consciousness is, and we follow in their footsteps. And that's what today's verse uh, is um, um, encouraging us and instructing us to do. So let's stop here and see if there are any questions or comments. I know I glossed over some of this stuff very quickly, but uh, I really wanted to just focus on the 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 the, the principle of it because if we if we just focus on the details of it and try to fix it from there again we can be inadvertently identifying with something that we are not trying to fix some sort of injustice that exists and the injustice does exist i admit that i acknowledge that and it's unfortunate but the only way to actually overcome that injustice properly identify with who we truly are we don't want to misidentify as anything we have to identify who we truly are identify others as who they truly are and treat them accordingly, right? I'm spirit soul, you're spirit soul. We're here to cooperate in Krishna consciousness. This is what I have to offer. That's what you have to offer. Let's go back home, back to Godhead. Okay, so let's stop here and see if there are any um, questions or comments. No? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Um, one thing that I, I, I'm always struggling with is how to, some people say that we are being fatalistic when we say it's, it's, uh, it's, it's our destiny or our, you know, our conditioning. And I, at least in theory, I am understanding it. How to explain it is where I have trouble. How do, how do I explain that? to people who have that kind of, you know, you're, you're just being fatalistic. You're just saying it is meant to be. And so you are not. Yeah. Very important thing. So, because, because these two things exist, right? There's, there's, there's fate. Um, but then there's free will. Right. So one might say, well, no, if, if everything's goes according to fate, then there can't be free will. And if there is free will, then what's the question of destiny? Because we can change our mind at any time. Now, the way to explain this and to understand it is that destiny or fate is that which we will follow if we just follow our default conditioning. So if I'm here in this body and I just continue to act as I've acted before, according to my conditioning, everything will go in a very predictable way. And that's called fate. Now, if I come to the realization and, uh, and and use my intelligence to to actually exercise my free will properly so if i come to this basically every moment in our lives we come to a a, a fork in the road and we have to choose what am i going to do now according to our conditioning it's fairly predictable which way we will go we'll do this we'll do that it's different for everyone but It'll, it's predictable for each person. But when you take free will into account, it means you have, if you get the knowledge of what you would normally tend to do is actually putting you on a path that you don't want to be on, and therefore you decide to take the other path, that essentially changes your fate, it changes your destiny, because you, you've, you've exercised your free will in the right way. Now, we're the process of Krishna consciousness. We are trying to completely erase fate because fate is that is the laws of material nature right we're trying to transcend that as this verse is pointing out 
So if we constantly use our free will only to serve Krishna, not to serve our senses, then fate is is no longer in play, right? Uh, we're just we're, we we've awakened our uh, uh, our constitutional nature, and you know then we return to our past times with Krishna. Um, but that's a difficult thing to do. It's a difficult thing to break a habit, right? So one example I I, I used to give is uh, you go you're in a shopping uh, you know some sort of store, and you see something that you really like, and your tendency is if I see this thing I'm going to buy it, right? Well, one day, maybe you find out that that thing is bad for you, right? And so now, when you see the thing, your tendency is still to buy it, but you have the intellectual capacity to uh, determine whether this thing is actually good for you or not, right? And if it's based on service to, to Krishna, the reason why you make the other decision, then that helps uh, change your faith, right? So that's the way that's the way I explain it anyway. Because both exist, this this idea of fate and this idea of you know we we can we can change, um, they both exist, and that's the way that you can understand them simultaneously. Did that did that explain that? Or sometimes I don't say things as clearly as I think I do. Um, no, you you did explain it uh, well. I it'll just take a little bit more time for me to try and practice. I guess that's. Uh... Thank you very much, Prabhu. Thank you. Uh, Sita Devi, I saw that you were unmuted before. Did you have something to add? Or anyone else? Okay. In that case, uh, we can end here. Thank you all for joining today. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Manchakal patal pishya kupar sindha bheo chan. Patita naam pavani bheo vaishnavi bheo namol namol. Thank you very much. Thank you very much Prabhu. Thank you. Lot of things, topics you did. Thank you very much. I have some feelings, but it's okay. Go ahead, share your feelings. That's why I'm asking it. No? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.